Dave, looking back at that one, uh, you mentioned the the drop passes, but on the defensive side of the football, the missed tackles, things along those lines. I mean, how fixable are those over these next couple weeks, especially you know when you enter the meat of the ACC schedule in a few weeks here? They're fixable. I mean, you know, some of that you got to give Notre Dame credit. Their backs are pretty good. You know, I mean, it wasn't like there was just some bad players out there. You know, I mean, they, they have pretty good running backs. Um, but, yes, to answer your question, they're they're fixable. I mean, I think tackling is about a lot of things, and there were some bad angles. Um, so that has to get corrected. There was one play where we had a guy aligned tighter than he should have been. He should have been deeper, which would have given him a better angle. But anything that you see in a game that you don't like, that's where you go, right? You're going to go to practice and you're going to focus on those things. And these kids will work really hard to get better at the things that they weren't showing their best at. And so, yeah, that's an area we're going to focus a lot on. And we actually focused on it before the game too. You know, they just made some plays. Ethan. Coach, uh, Red Hibbler and Noah Potter made some plays against Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, just, how would you assess the play of the uh, backup defensive lineman Saturday? Yeah, excited. Like I told you in pre, uh, preseason camp, I think our D-line rotation is going to be good. You know, I think we have fresh bodies that can go in and, and create um, some issues for offensive linemen. And Red has been a good pass rusher uh, since he got here. He was in junior college. That's why we recruited him. I really feel like he can be a guy off the edge that creates problems. Noah's a strainer, comes in and just plays really hard. Brandon Cleveland's got a, a huge, huge upside to him. He and CJ inside are both really active guys. There's a lot of similarities in their play. They, they can both really move. And so it's nice having that um, rotation and being able to keep guys fresh throughout the game. And then Trevally comes in and adds that as well. So, you know, we feel like we've got seven guys that we can rotate through in that three-man front. <clears throat> Jaden? Yeah, so you talked a little bit about the leadership on the team. Um, you know, specifically looking at Peyton Wilson and just, you know, can you speak about the growth that that you, you've you seen from him and just the significance of how he stepped up this last week? Yeah, it starts with him uh, effort-wise. You know, he, he ran a kid down in the game and hit 23.4 miles an hour on the GPS. That's the fastest we've ever had in NC State. Like, that kid plays so hard, you know. And and, and so that's where it starts because everybody in this entire program, like, there's just so much respect to the the level of fatigue the guy ends up with at the end of practice game, spins it all out there. Uh, and then just the way he treats people, he treats everybody with such care and respect in the locker room and the, and the building. And so because of how hard he plays and, and how respectful he is, he can then also be very demanding of people. And so when he does, you know, ask guys to step up, they're going to listen to him. And he's learned how to do that in a really good way. Uh, he, he's commanding on that defensive side of the ball and and it spreads you know he's done a really good job i'm super proud of him and you know it's paying off you know it's paying off in a lot of ways on our team right now jc i think you guys had 33 plays on first down but maybe 28 of them were four yards or less did you detect anything from the film review that maybe Notre dame did or or just was it just a kind of fluky situation? Well, I mean, we got to be more efficient than that. You know, they outperformed us in those downs. Um, they did a, they were a 30% blitz team coming in and they blitzed us 60% of the game. Like they really turned up the heat uh, in the game. And so there was a lot of adjusting going on there for a while because that obviously wasn't what we prepared for on those downs as much. And they, did a good job. You know, they brought a lot of pressure from a lot of places and their kids are aggressive. So we have to perform better at that. Um, you would say that they won those downs. I thought once we kind of settled down, unfortunately, it took till after the first quarter, we started moving the ball more routinely in those down and distances. But 
Yeah, they had a good plan. They, they brought a lot of different pressures that we didn't practice in those situations enough. And so an area we can grow and get better. And obviously we know that opponents copy other people. So that's something we got to prepare more for moving forward. James. Dave, I believe uh, three of your four newcomers at a wide receiver or tight end, uh, Vereen, um, Casey, um, I'm forgetting when Dakari, we're in, at spring practice with you. But you saw those three and Rosner make plays in this game. Is that something just kind of as they continue to work through the season early and get into games, maybe more reps? I mean, just just discuss their roles kind of moving forward. Well, KC's already getting a yeah. lot of reps. So, I mean, I, I don't think he needs more reps. He just needs to make some more plays, you know, and, and he will. He will. As he plays more, the game will slow down for him. Um, so, you know, these mistakes that he's making now, they're freshman mistakes. He's going to learn and grow a lot. We all saw that through Mecca's career, how much better he got, you know, playing from freshman year on. Unfortunately, sometimes you're going to deal with freshman mistakes when you play a freshman. And we're just going to have to accelerate his learning curve a little bit to the best of our ability. But he's playing a lot. And I think Vereen, as he continues to play better, for him it's going to be more about playing without the ball, the better he can become a blocker. Uh, and he's gotten a lot better in that area. He can help us as a receiver and, and a ball catcher, and he can do a lot of things. Um, you know, Dakari has been injured a lot since he's been here, and so for us with him, it's more about there's still a lot to be seen as he can stay consistent in practice. He has a good skill set, and as he puts together weeks on weeks and days on days, you're going to see him move up. But he's still, you know, he missed a lot of time with hamstrings and groins and things like that. Even though he enrolled in December, he missed a lot of practice. And so now he's been back for two weeks consecutive. And if we can keep that trend going the right direction, that will help us with him. And Bradley just continues to impress us, you know. So his role will continue to grow because of that. And that's the one thing about Coach and I, like, he's going to reward performers. Like, that's what he does. And he's going to continue to tweak this thing. We're still in the early stages. Mm -hmm. offensively of figuring out what we are I think you know it's it's not there yet obviously you, you come out of training camp but you think you know but games are games they're different and, and so this season offense is going to evolve as this thing goes and just to follow up a lot of dropbacks in this game against a really strong front how would you evaluate your offensive line and the blocking uh and pass pro we gave up one sack you know there was nine pressures uh, we got to do a better job there uh, keeping Brennan clean, you know, there's a couple times where uh, we, he was hot. And so we had a guy on block purposely and, and sometimes we got the throw where we wanted it. Um, sometimes he had to run, you know, we can be better, but you know, that is a really good front. Those linebackers, mm -hmm. as I said, going into that game are elite players. So they won some, we won some, right. But I don't think that was the the difference in the game. Like it's just, you know, it's kind of one of those games where, you know, there was just a, a lot of, it was different, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in there, the the weather and, and then the delay and um, drop passes, you know, early in the game that could have made first downs, you know, we made a third and four drop and then a third and six drop in the first half that both would have converted. And so those are moving the chains and, and you're not when you drop them, you know, and so just little things like that, you know, and then there's a third and one. We're going to convert. We have a hard count. They jump off sides and we don't snap the ball. And then our receiver moves. Now it's third and six. So we defeated ourselves there, you know. So just little things where we got to be better like we were in the first game. Like we got into a lot of those manageable third downs and we operated. And we just didn't operate the way we needed to in that game at times. Thanks, Dave. Corey? Dave, similarly in the run game, 84 total yards on 30 attempts in this game, not nearly what it was against UConn, obviously a different team that you're facing. Uh, but just your thoughts on on the way the ground game performed and and the blocking up front as well. Yeah, I mean, it can be better for sure. You know, when you get behind in the game too, it's hard to, to really lean in on it. Uh, but that was a good front. They were blitzing a ton. It's a hard front to run the ball into because of that. And I think areas we got to be better up front, 100%. And there's things we can do to make it easier for them. You know, I think um, they ran some good blitzes into some plays, and we didn't handle them well. 
Um, so it's a, a back and forth on that. And I think as coach and I learns kind of what we're best at, it will help. It will help. But um, there are some areas like any game that you were pretty excited about, areas you weren't. You know, it was good to see Kendrick Raphael get in the game. And I thought he made a really nice catch out of the backfield for a freshman to make a contact catch like that. You know, the hit showed some progress for him. I think Delbert Mems ran really hard in short yardage. I think, you know, Jordan Houston didn't get a lot of touches, um, but he really protected well. I mean, they were blitzing. He was picking up guys and did a really nice job in that role for us. Michael, you know, just only got one carry, was in there for a lot of the, the pass game. Um, so just wasn't one of those games where we leaned on the run game, I think probably more because of what they were doing. But um, you know how I am. I mean, that's an area I'd love to be better at. And as a follow-up, you spoke a couple times last week about Brennan, you know, needing to let plays develop a little bit more as opposed to to rolling out um, at times. How did you assess uh, his ability to kind of to stay back there in the pocket and let plays develop as opposed to running uh, and yeah. carrying the football as well? I thought he did a better job of that. You know, he took some shots in there and threw some good balls. Like you watched the throw he made to Bradley Rosner over the middle. I mean, he's got number eight right in his chin and actually hits him right as it's thrown. And that's a beautiful ball. He threw a pretty seam ball to Porter that, you know, we dropped uh, and threw a really pretty seam ball in third and 17 um, to uh, KC that ended up being the interception, you know, that went through his hands. So I thought he got better. He threw a great uh, fade ball outside to Keon, you know. Uh, so there was areas where I think he trusted it more in there. And then when he had to run, he ran. He scrambled around and made a great play to Bradley for the touchdown, right? So, you know, I think as the season goes, again, these are new players with him. He's getting to know these guys still, and it's it's a work in progress. But the kid this works really hard, man. He is uh, – He's a guy when he gets into practice, you can see like there was one day he wasn't very accurate with some guys. The next day he comes out and he's just all over it with them. And he really takes all these things to heart. You know, you love how hard he plays. And so I think, you know, the biggest step, next step is just the chemistry of these receivers and, and not just receivers, ball catchers, because so many guys get balls thrown to them in our offense. You know, just being consistent for him and him being accurate for them and them having that, you know, really good chemistry together to make plays for each other and it'll happen. I mean, I'm excited about the way the guys looked in the, in the team room yesterday. There was a very, very good look, a very upset, but driven look about the team. JC. You mentioned coach Rocco earlier and last night I looked up that Richmond box score, some great names, Brian Sheriffs, Nicholas Sadie. You ever look back and I'm sure in coaching years, it feels like 30 years ago. But do you ever kind of reflect back about what it was like in the beginning and where the program is now? Yeah. Was that 2013? Yeah, it was your first year. Yeah. I think. So that's 77 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Dog years, right? <laughs> it's a long time ago, man. Yeah, it was a nice kick by Nick Sadie to win the game. Um, I remember pieces of that game, but uh, that was a nice kick. Um, we've come a long way in, in a million ways, you know. Uh, in a million ways, culturally, uh, the facilities, what's what's happened here over you know a period of time, the stadium, the way the fans, I mean, every game sold out. It's a huge thank you to our fan base and you know, the way we're recruiting. Um, so there's just a lot of things to be grateful for. A lot of hard work has gone into it, and there's a lot of great days to come.